Welcome to my workshop. My name is Tomasz and you're watching Casual DIY channel. Today we're going to be talking about some basics around pocket hole joinery. Pocket hole joinery is fast, easy and strong. However, I want to show you how the joinery it actually looks like and how it works as um, you know, with the jig itself, you're going to have a special drill bit, you're going to have special screws for it as well. So step by step, I want to show you how the whole thing works, um, the screws, why are they different and can you use normal screws and what that will lead to. Let's have a closer look at this. Right, then, that's the pocket hole. Through there, we're going to drive a screw and we'll be able to connect two pieces of wood, just like so or like that, depending on the project you are doing. Now the pocket holes are good if you can hide that hole here. Now you do have an option where you can uh, get these pre-cut dowels. They are already cut to an angle, like so. So you insert them, add some glue, hammer it in through, and then just sand or cut off the excess. However, you can also use just normal dowels. You can cut out, put them inside, inside the hole just like so, add some glue, cut them off. So I will only use this method of joinery if I can actually hide these holes within the project. But how does it actually look? As you see, the uh, screw itself is actually hidden beneath the surface of the board itself. There's a ledge just over here where the head will stop on. And as you can see, now the rest of the screw goes into the piece of wood that we want to join. For example, like so. The screw itself goes under an angle and you need to be careful where you place the screws. Under this condition that would be a fairly weak joint as the screw goes that way so it's easier to actually tear this apart. So it would be far better if the joint was orientated this way where the screw goes into the body of the second board so it's got a far greater grip on the joint itself. Depending on what the project you're doing, that's not always possible. So for example, in this scenario, if the boards were orientated like this and the screw goes to the outside and there's not a lot of material here, I would reinforce the joint with some glue. Now on many occasions you will actually use pocket hole joinery as a way of clamping to materials to allow for the glue to set. Okay, That's a common use for those as well if the project is very hard um, to use clamps on or you actually don't have enough clamps for the project itself you can actually use pocket holes to hold um, both of the pieces together as the glue dries. Obviously again making sure that the holes uh, that are made by the drill are hidden away and they will not be visible in the final product. Okay, let's talk about the drill bit itself to understand how the pocket holes are being made and how they actually work. So as you can see, it's got a collet at the back over here. That is to stop the drill bit at a certain depth as you are using the jig. We'll get to that in a moment. So it's a fairly uh, thick bit so it makes a large channel in the piece of wood and then as you can see you've got a small tip straight tip at the front of the drill bit and that's creating the pilot hole for um, the screw itself however you do not make a pilot hole in the second piece that you want to join together so it's only in the piece that you are putting uh, the pocket hole in now as you can see just over here below the straight tip that part there is more or less flat and that will allow for the screws to sit on correctly, grab and force the material to be jointed with relatively strong force and that's why the screws are designed in a specific way. Let's have a look at our pocket hole just over here. So as the drill bit goes through you can see it will create the channel and it will stop just over here. The stop is dictated by the jig itself, okay? And that will allow for the screw head. It's quite light, it's a washer um, head screw. It will sit on that flat surface there. And as you tighten both of the boards, 
it's got a lot of area that it can grab onto and make sure it's a nice and strong joint. Let's focus on the screws themselves. Now I am using Craig screws so let's have a look at this one first. As you can see it's a fine thread and it's got that flat surface over here. So that flat surface goes into that pilot hole there just like so. They're fine threaded screws are suitable for hardwoods. Coarse screw are good for softwoods like pine. You also got the special washer head. The most important bit of these screws are the self-drilling tips just over here. So they will bore their own pilot holes as uh, they are driven inside of your workpiece. That will prevent splitting the workpiece. You also can get a filister head screw just like this one. The head of the screw is slightly different. This helps to compact the fibers of the wood as you are driving the uh, screw in. And generally speaking, they are better uh, with regards to stripping the screws. Now, there's another factor you need to consider when choosing the screws. Obviously, it's length. Now, usually with these screws, you do get a chart with thickness of the material, and what length of screw is required for that. And finally, you may also get these specially coated screws. These are uh, made for the exterior, okay? So any project that you're gonna be doing for the outside, you need to look for those. But let me just show you the difference between uh, the screw for the pocket holes and a normal wood screw, okay? So the tip, as you can see, in a cone shape, just like that. So you are quite prone there to blast through your workpiece and it will just not stop at that ledge uh, that's created by the bit itself. So it will probably go through that and it will end uh, a lot deeper than it needs to be. Plus it doesn't have that self-drilling tip. So, you know, you're gonna have a chance of splitting your workpiece with the normal screw using it with pocket holes. Let's drill some pocket holes. I'm using this um, pocket hole jig from Trent Pro pocket hole jig, that's what I've got, that's what I'm going to be using. More or less, all the jigs are quite similar to each other. So there's two things that you need to set up before you start drilling. You need to find out the thickness of your piece. So you can measure that, or as in this case, you can actually place it on the base and that will tell you how thick these pieces are. In my case, this is about 16 millimeters thickness, so that's in metric and imperial, so you cover it on both sides over here. Okay, so I'd say 16 millimeters. On the front of the jig, you can also see uh, all the numbers here. So I'm gonna set this up to about 16 millimeters. Just like that, so the jig is now set up. The next thing that you need to set up is the drill bit itself, the collar. For that, I do have this special thingy magic just over here. So I'm gonna place it in that specially designated space for it just over here. I'm gonna drop the drill bit and loosen the collar just like so set it up correctly drop the drill bit lock the collar and that's done okay so that will make sure the drill bit it will not hit the jig itself and it will go to the correct depth of the piece of wood so now with everything ready we can place our board just like so clamp it down if that is not going all the way what you can do extend the clamps reach lock it in place and this is now super steady it's not going to go anywhere and there you go two perfect pocket holes as you've seen i was drilling uh, through I was making this motion up and down, up and down. That is to allow all the chips to actually be extracted and, you know, basically allow them to exit um, the pocket hole itself. So that's the pocket holes. And as you can see, they are just popping in the middle of the workpiece as we have set up the jig correctly and the drill bit as well. Now there's also a couple of things that you need to be aware of when you are actually driving the screws through. As you can see the top ends are square and you've got a special bit for those to fit in there to drive them in. 
So I'm going to install that in my drill. Make sure you set up your drill to driving in mode, low gear, okay, so it goes a lot slower. One more thing before you start driving the screw in, uh, make sure the clutch is set up correctly on your drill bit so um, you know when it meets resistance it will basically stop and not go through the material and on top of it make sure you actually clamp your work i do have this special clamp that i've got with these large um, heads over here so that will help me in aligning the material however if you don't have that just a normal clamp clamp it to a flat surface so you've got a nice and flat joint here okay remember this piece doesn't have any um, pilot holes in it so as you are driving the screws it may drift it may go up down or left to right and then you're not going to have a nice and straight uh, joint just like so and now i can drive in the screws and there you go you got a perfect joint nice and strong now I just want to show you a very common mistake that uh, people do with these types of joints. So as you can see, um, the pocket holes went with the grain of the wood and they are going against the grain on the second piece and that is a strong connection. Whereas in this case I went with the pocket holes against the grain and obviously that leads to a lot of tear out in the piece as well. However, now if you put the screws um, in this piece where the screws will go with the grain it's a far weaker joint um, in this case okay so avoid this way make sure to drill your um, pocket holes with the grain um, of your boards now it doesn't mean that that's the only joint you can do obviously you can do joints like that you know build carcasses face fronts anything you want with this type of um, joining method I'm just going to show you that we can do a joint like that as well. And now we can put everything together. So in this example, the screws are going like so. So there is a lot of material and this is a quite hard joint. But let's do the same thing on the other side where these are going the other way. So the screws will go like that. Let's see how hard will be for me to break that joint. Far, far easier. Actually, with no issues at all, I've managed to break the joint, as you can see. So try to remember when you're doing these joints on the positioning of your screws and how they're going to go and how you can actually hide the holes in your project. Now that's all the basic information I wanted to share with you on today's video and I hope it you know gave you a little bit more confidence in using this really simple and effective way of joinery. I fully recommend it. Yes it's a initial investment for example in a jig um, and the screws itself obviously they're a little bit more expensive than the normal ones. I will try to find some replacements for these crags because uh, obviously the crags will be a bit more expensive than anything else so i'll try to have a look on those on amazon or somewhere else and there will be some links down below in the description of this video so go ahead and check those out now as it comes to the joining method itself i think it's really simple and it's just so so quick with the correct setup as i said you know this can actually have its own place its own um bench and its own um, a jig to itself which I'm actually going to be building in the near future so if you're interested in that make sure to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss that future content however I think with the initial investment this will pay itself off really quickly in the time you're going to save on figuring out other ways of joining methods and it's just so clean so easy to do uh, especially with this jig from trend you know the dust extraction as you've seen works absolutely fantastically on that so yes i hope today's video was informative to you um but i also got a lot of other project videos that you may be interested in that i do around my workshop the playlist should be just over here so go and click those and i'll see you on those videos there take care